Hello everyone, this is Poojita from Talent Battle. Welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to check the previous year Infosys Mathematical Ability Questions. As we know, Infosys is planning to hire 2023 batch students through on-campus placements. This video is going to help you to prepare for that. You can also join our live training for Infosys in which we will be covering out all the previous year questions of reasoning ability, mathematical ability, verbal ability, pseudocode and puzzle solving. The new batch is going to start from 20th of this month. Also, join our social media platforms like Telegram group, Instagram page and WhatsApp group. We constantly give updates on placement preparations and off-campus placements. Link for all of this or in the description box. So before we start, do not forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications about our videos. We will start. Here is a question from the concept of ages. Tina says, if you reverse my A's, you will get my brother Trevor's A's. The difference between our ages is 1 11th of the sum of our ages. What does Tina says? So if you reverse her A's, you will get the brother's A's. But suppose if Tina is 35, if I reverse it, it is 53. So brother will be 53. Or if you reverse brother, 30, uh, 53, you will get Tina. So if you reverse their ages, the other person is will be obtained. Now, the difference of their ages is equal to 1 11th of the sum of their ages. That means if we do the difference of their ages, that should be equal to 1 by 11th of their sum of their sum. Now we need to identify what is A's of Tina. So the best way to approach this kind of questions is option verification process. But suppose, let me imagine Tina is 50 years. Let me choose option A. If Tina is 50 years, her brother age should be 0, 05, means which is 5 years. If you reverse it, it is 0, 05. Now you need to check whether this ages are going to satisfy the particular condition or not. So the difference between their ages. So what is the difference between 50 and 5? It is 45. This should be equal to 1 by 11th of their sum. How much is the sum 50 plus 5? So 1 by 11th of 55. Okay, 1 by 11th of 55 is 5. So 45 is not equal to 5. That means this expression is not going to satisfy the uh, condition they mentioned in the question. So the age of Tina 50 years is wrong. So let us suppose it is option B. Means Tina is, is equals to 45. If Tina is 45, brother is supposed to be 54. So the difference should be equal to 1 11th of their sum. So let us check whether it is going to satisfy the condition. So how much is the difference between them? 54 minus 45, 9. This should be equal to 1 11th of the sum. 54 plus 45, 99. Satisfied exactly. So 9 is equals to 9. Exactly satisfied. So what is the age of Tina? It is 45 years. The best way to approach this kind of questions is by doing option verification. It is very easy for us to solve if I go through options. Do not try to imagine x, y and y, x. You have two unknowns and you have only one expression. So go through the options and check which of the option is going to satisfy the condition. Do not worry, there will be more, no more options will satisfy. Only one option we need to pick, so only one option will satisfy the condition. So this is option B is the correct answer for this question. It's a question from the concept of mixture and allegation. We are going to use the rule of allegation to solve this kind of questions. So let's see what is the question. Bob buys rice at rupees 16.6 per kg and rice at 12.4 per kg. If he want to mix A and B so that the new mixture C comes to rupees 14.6 per kg, in what ratio Bob will mix the rice A and B. So whenever you are going to mix two units and you obtain the resultant, you are going to apply the rule of allegation. What is rule of allegation is what, what you are going to mix should be in the top. So we are going to mix A and B and we get the resultant C. Yes. So let us write the value of A. How much is the cost of A? It is 16.6 on the top and B. A with B. So first I wrote A and then B, which is 12.4. Now the resultant. The resultant mixture C is 14.6. So that's in the middle, 14.6. Okay, what you are supposed to mix or on the top and the resultant in the middle. 
Now, the differences should be mentioned upon the opposite side. Means 16.6 and 14.6, which difference is 2, should be written here. And this side, 14.6 and 12.4, the difference is 2.2, this side. So, this is going to be the ratio of the mixture. 2.2 is to 2. The differences should be upon the opposite sides. What, what you are supposed to mix should be upon the top and the resultant in the middle. The difference is on the opposite sides. So that will give you the ratio of the mixture. Okay, not only for this question, any kind of question that comes under allegations rule, you can apply this. Now 2.2 is to 2. So I will multiply with 10 on both sides. Ratio will not change if you multiply with the same number. So that is 22 is to 20. So it is nothing but 11 is to 10. So the mixture is supposed to be 11 is to 10 ratio. Option A. 10 is to 11 is wrong. It is B is to A. A is to B and B is to A are not same. So A is to B is 11 is to 10. Option A is the correct answer. Now here, a question from statistics. It's a simple question. They are asking us the range of the data. What is range of this data? Range is nothing but highest observation minus the lowest. Which is the highest one here? 7, 10, 6, 72, 83, 60, 12, and 5. So 83 is the highest one. So 83 minus the lowest. Which among this is lowest? 5. The lowest one. Range is nothing but the highest one minus the lowest. So 83 minus 5 is 78. So answer option D, 78. If a batsman scored four sixes, come 11 boundaries fours and 22 runs running between the wickets, then what is the run per ball if the batman faced 60 balls? So if the batman has faced 60 balls, what is the run per ball? So overall, how many runs he did, we will find out. So number of runs, four sixes. Four sixes means four into six will be the runs. For one, uh, one six, you will get six runs. There are four sixes, means four into six, plus 11 boundaries, means 11 into four, plus 22 runs between the wickets. Between the wickets, he ran 22 runs. So overall, how many runs he did? 24 plus 44 plus 22. 24 plus 44 is 68 plus 22, means 90 runs. So overall, 90 runs he did, and number of balls he faced is 60. So per one ball, per one ball, your question is per a ball, means per one ball, how many runs he should do approximately? 90 runs, 60 balls, means one ball he did number of runs divided by number of balls, which is 90 divided by 60, 1.5. Option D, 1.5 runs per the ball. Okay, uh, the value should be 1.5 runs per the ball. Then, all, then he will complete this averagely 1.5 runs. Then he will complete all of this 90 runs in 60 balls. Option D. If the sum of 15 data points is 2100 and all the data is doubled and then 10 is subtracted from each of the data then the new average is greater than the old average by. So the sum of 15 data is 2100. So sum is equals to 2100 and number of data. Number of data is equals to 15. So what will be the average? Average is nothing but sum divided by number. Sum divided by number which is 140. So the previous average or the old average is 140. 140. Now what happened? Every number is doubled. Every number, whatever the numbers there are, they are doubled and then 10 is subtracted from them. See, average is 140. So let us consider all the numbers are 140. For suppose all of these 15 numbers are 140, 140, 140, then average will be 140 itself. So let us consider every number is 140 itself. Okay, now Every number is doubled, means all the numbers are doubled, means each number will become 280. From this, 10 is subtracted, means every number is going to become 270, 270, 270. Yes, so what will be the average of 270, 15 times? It will be 270 itself. How many times you take? If you add it, 270 plus 270 plus so on until 15 times and divided by 15, 15 and 15 will get cancelled and the new average will be 270 itself. 
Okay, so how much is the differences between the averages? Old average was 140 and the new average is 270. So from 270, how much is the difference of 140? It is 130. 130. So what's the answer? Option A. Whenever you know the average, you can imagine the numbers as the average itself. That means you can assume every number can be 140 instead of assuming X and all. You can just imagine all the numbers are 140. Now every number is doubled and 10 is subtracted from this. Means all the numbers are going to become 270. So even 270, if you add it, if you add it 15 times and divide it by 15, this is the new average. So 270, if I take common, it is 15 into 270, 270, 15 times by 15, 270, 270 will get cancelled. If every number is same, the average will be that number itself. There is no necessary event to solve. The average will be the number itself. So the new average of them will become 270. So old average was 140. New average will be 270. So the differences between them is 130. Option A, 130 is the correct answer. If you know the average, assume the number as the same. Option A is correct. 60% of a number X is 30% of another number y. What is the ratio of x is to y? 60% of x is equals to 30% of another number y. So 60% of x is equals to 30% of y. So what is 60% is 60 by 100 into x is equals to 30 by 100 into y. So 100, 100 will get cancelled. 0, 0 will get cancelled once and two times. So 2x is equals to y. That means x by y is equals to 1 by 2. 2x is equals to y. So when, uh, when y comes this side, 2 will move this side. So it is 1 by 2. So what is the ratio of x is to y? It is nothing but 1 is to 2. 1 is to 2. Sam, Anna, no, work in a supermarket and have been assigned the job of arranging the items in a rack. Okay, it's rack. Uh, to do this, Sam takes 20 minutes more than no. For suppose, yeah, there are three persons. So Sam takes 20 minutes more than her. While Anna takes 60 minutes more than no. For suppose if I consider her as X, Sam will take 20 minutes more. And she will take 60 minutes more. That means it is X plus 60 and this will be X plus 20 than her 20 minutes more and than her 60 minutes more. So we can consider it as X and this will be X plus 20 and X plus 60. Okay, next what else they give? The ratio of time taken by Sham and Anna is 3 is to 4. What is the time required by No to complete the task alone? So the clearly said Sham and Anna ratio is 3 is to 4, 3 by 4. That means if I do X plus 20, divided by x plus 60, this should be equal to 3 by 4. This is the time taken for them, x plus 20 and x by 60. So if I do cross multiplication, 4x plus 80 is equals to 3x plus 180. That implies we will get value of x is equals to 100. So no, is nothing but x minutes itself. So no necessary to add 20 or 60. So how much time she will take? 100 minutes. If it is Sam, 120, and if it is Anna, 160 minutes. So they gave us the ratio, and we know it is X plus 20 and X plus 60. So this should be equal to 3 by 4, value of X will be 100. Option A is the correct answer. In a college, 20% of the staff are below 40 years. So there are 20% of the staff who are below 40 years, less than 40 years. And number of staff who are 40 years old is 48. So exactly 40 years. How many are there? Exactly 40 years. This is exactly 40 years. There are 48, 48 staff is there. The number of staff above 40 years of age is 2 by third of number of staff who are 48. So above 40 years or 2 by third of 2 by third of who are 40 years? How many are 40 years? 48. In the 2 by third, 2 by third, in that they are 2 by third, which is nothing but if I can say 32 people. So exactly 40 years is 48 people, above 40 years is 32 people. 
now our question what is the total number of staff in the college so we know below 40 uh, is 20 so who are 40 and above 40 will be 80% if below 40 are 20 above 40 and who are 40 will be 80% so i can say 80% of the total staff is equals to here for 48 people who are exactly 40 And thirty-two people are above forty, which is eighty. If eighty percent of the total staff is eighty, what is hundred percent? Total staff is nothing but hundred percent, which is hundred. You can go or else eighty divided by hundred, eighty percent divided by hundred into total staff is equals to eighty. That implies total staff is equals to hundred. So the number of total staff is hundred. If they ask us below forty, twenty percent we calculate, but they are asking us total staff. If below forty or twenty percent, exactly forty and above forty will be eighty percent. So these are nothing but eighty. Thirty-two plus forty-eight is eighty. So eighty percent of the total staff is eighty. Then total staff will be equal to hundred. So what's the answer? Option A. Option A is the correct answer. So the next one. You are forming a gift set consisting of three candies and two chocolates. from a set of seven different candies and five different chocolates the seven candies are numbered 1 to 7 the five chocolates are numbered 8 to 12 in how many ways can you form a gift set if the candies number 1 and the chocolate number 9 cannot be together in the gift set cannot be together in the gift set now you need to form such that this cannot be together so what we can do is we can first find out total number of cases that we can form okay let's just find out total number of cases no condition we will apply just find out total number of cases first so how many total candies are there there are seven candies okay see here there are seven candies and we need to choose three candies no condition i'm applying i'm just finding out total first there are seven candies i need to choose three candies means it is 7c3 and along with the candies there are five chocolates i need to choose two chocolates means which is 5c2 so we apply the concept of combination ncr is equals to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial into r factorial or we can easily apply a trick 7 3 uh, 7c3 value of r is 3 so just write three numbers from 7 in reverse 7 into 6 into 5 divided by r is 3 so write from 1 to 3 okay into similarly uh, here it is 2 so 5 into 4 divided by 1 into 2 or you can apply this one so now if we cancel it over we will get it as 350 ways so total 350 ways are there now what i will find uh, i will do i will find out how many ways i will include one numbered one and numbered numbered one candy and number nine candy together i cannot find cannot be together what i'll do i'll first find together together both are present both are present okay both are present so from total seven candies one is definitely supposed to be there so remaining two only you are supposed to select total seven candies are there which are numbered from 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so one should be definitely taken so there is no other ways it is just one way now remaining six i need to select two more because total three candies we want out of remaining six i need to select two and then five chocolates are there which are number like 8 9 10 11 12 11. so nine i should definitely select there is no other way selecting one and nine is just one way and then remaining four i need to choose one because total two chocolates i want i need to choose one so it will be remaining four you are choosing out one so 4c1 so this is nothing but 6 into 5 divided by 1 into 2 into 4 means this is going to give us 60 ways 60 ways now total there are 350 ways and together there are 60 ways if they are together there are 60 ways our question is not together our question cannot be together so cannot be together so what you can do total cases minus together if we do that will give us not together for suppose there are 100 students in my class 20 students are btech so how many are not btech means what can i say i can say 80 students are not btech 
so instead of doing how many or not you cannot see, check all the ways cannot we cannot directly check it out nine cannot come with one but nine can come with two three four five six and seven and similarly one cannot come with nine but one can come with eight nine ten eleven and twelve uh, a part of nine it can come with remaining but writing all of those cases will be very difficult for us to do that's why we will do total cases and together case and the subtraction of this is going to give us the answer so total 350 and subtract 60 so 290 cases are there which they cannot be together so what is the answer option b total minus together will give us cannot be together so the answer is option b that's few of the questions that appeared in infosys mathematical ability in previous years so hope you understood thank you for watching the video and do subscribe our channel for more updates from us